Amazon SageMaker Debugger lets you monitor, profile, and debug your machine learning model training to gain more insights into the training process. Debugger captures model metrics and monitors the system resources without you requiring to write any additional code. All metrics are captured in real time, so you can correct issues during training, which speeds up your training time and enables you to get higher quality models to production much faster. If we look at the automatic detection analysis and alerts, Debugger reduces the troubleshooting during training from days to hours by automatically detecting and alerting you to common training errors such as gradient values becoming too large or too small. You can view alerts in Amazon SageMaker Studio or configure alerts through Amazon CloudWatch. Additionally, the SageMaker Debugger SDK enables you to automatically detect new classes of model-specific errors such as data sampling or hyperparameter values. Looking at the monitoring and profiling capabilities, Amazon SageMaker Debugger automatically monitors the system resource utilization metrics and allows you to profile your training jobs to collect detailed machine learning framework metrics. It also correlates the anomalies in resource utilization to specific operations and helps you to identify bottlenecks quickly. You can choose to profile your training runs either at the start of the training job or at any point when training is in progress. And you can visualize the different system resources, including GPU, CPU, network, and I.O. memory within SageMaker Studio, and download a detailed report for offline analysis. Looking at the built-in analysis and actions, Amazon SageMaker Debugger comes with built-in analysis in the form of rules that automatically analyze data emitted during training, such as inputs, outputs, and transformations, also known as tensors. You can use the built-in rules for different scenarios, including to detect whether a model is overfitting or overtraining, whether gradients are getting too large or too small, or whether GPU resources are underutilized. With SageMaker Debugger, you can also create your own custom rules to analyze specific conditions in your training jobs. Further, you can specify actions such as stop the training and send an SMS or an email when a rule is triggered. Early stopping can help reduce training costs and iterate faster on your models. So let's see this in action. All right, so I'm in my Amazon SageMaker Studio environment, and I do have a sample notebook here to fine tune a bird model, specifically a Roberta model, which is a very popular NLP model architecture. And we wanna create a text classification. So we wanna be able to do some sentiment analysis. The data set I'm using is the Amazon Customer Reviews data set, which contains over 150 million customer reviews from the Amazon.com marketplace. And this is a public data set you can use for research purposes. The data set contains a lot of information. I'm particularly interested in the star rating, which is a rating from one to five, one being the lowest, five being the best for each review. And I'm also interested in the review body, which is the actual review text. So we're gonna use this data set. And the task here is to use a pre-trained bird model. So I'm using a model from the Hugging Face library, a Roberta model. And I've also performed a quick feature engineering step to transform the star rating class one to five into a sentiment class minus one, zero, one, minus one representing the negative reviews, zero neutral, and one being the positive ones. In this training step, I now wanna add a classifier layer on top of the pre-trained bird model and fine tune it to this specific data set. And I want the model then to be able to predict the sentiment of any given review. All right, so the first step here is to pull in the popular Python libraries, one Boda 3 for AWS services, and the other one is the SageMaker Python SDK. 
I'm also importing a couple of things needed. For example, the PyTorch estimator, which I'm going to use. So I'm using PyTorch as my framework. And also for SageMaker debugger, some new configurations here, profiler configuration and the framework profile, which I'm going to explain here in just a second. I'm also making sure I'm setting up um, some information like the session, bucket, role, the region I'm in, and the account ID, and in case I need it here, the SageMaker client. All right, then I'll need to have access to my training data. So here I'm just retrieving my pre-processed files. It's TSD files from the data set, which are pre-processed now to have the sentiment classes. And you can see I'm using two categories here, digital video games and the digital software. All right, next step, I can also optimize the training data inputs. And here I'm specifying the S3 distribution strategy to be sharded by S3 key. And by doing that, all of the training input files will be sharded across the different instances in case you're using more than one instance for training. All right, then I need to define my hyperparameters. So in the NLP bird model, one specific parameter is the max sequence length, which represents the number of input tokens to process at a maximum in the model. And looking at the review data, I've done a quick distribution here of the number of words. And you can see here that um, picking a 64 is a good value. It's roughly 70 percentile of my data. So for this value, I'm going to pick 64. And I'm also specifying a couple of more parameters here, as you can see. Batch size, number of epics, etc. And I'm also defining the instance to run the training. So in this case, I'm picking a GPU-based instance, in particular, the P3 to xlarge. And I'm just going to pick one instance. Note that you can also do distributed training here by increasing this number to anything larger than one. All right, so next I'm just creating here a dictionary of my hyperparameters. And I'm also keeping track of important metrics. So we want to make sure to capture, for example, training loss, training accuracy, validation loss, and validation accuracy. And what I'm doing here is I'm defining the regex expressions. So SageMaker can grab those metrics from the CloudWatch logs and then also visualize them. All right, so now we're coming to the Amazon SageMaker debugger configuration. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to use the built-in debugger rules that monitor my training job. And I'm just picking two rules here. One is the loss not decreasing, and one is to check if we have the condition of overtraining. So what will happen is that in parallel to my training job, debugger will check if those conditions are met at any time during my training. And the next configuration I'm doing here is for the debugger profiling capability. So I'm setting up this profiler config. I'm specifying the interval to run the profiling. In this case, let's do 500 milliseconds. And I'm also here defining the framework specific parameters to keep track and profile anything that's happening. All right, and then we can start defining the estimator. So in this case, I'm pulling in PyTorch estimator. I'm pointing it to my training script. In this case, it's training.py. Also, the source directory here, which contains any additional code. I'm pointing it to the image to use, give it a job name, giving it the role, and also pointing here to the instance count and the instance type to use, which we defined before, training volume size, specifying the Python version, the framework version, passing in the hyperparameters, the metrics, and the input mode. And here you can notice that I'm also now passing in the profiler config and the debugger rules. And with that, we can start the training. So I call fit on my estimator, and this will kick off the training job. You can also have a quick look here into my training script. So I haven't changed really anything in my train.py. So this is really the normal training script I would have developed for my model. All right, so let's see. So the training is running right now. 
and I can obviously monitor the training from here, check the CloudWatch logs, etc. I've executed the job here before, so we can see the results. So once the training job is completed, you can, of course, check on the model artifacts. So here you can, for example, pull down the model.tar file if you're interested. And we can also start reviewing the debugger results. So starting here from the notebook environment, I could check on the latest profiling job and see the artifact path. And you will notice that in your training job F3 location, you can find a profiler output folder. And in here you find all of the outputs from the profiling step, including the profiler report.html and the generated notebook. You can also check from here on the debugger rules. And if we look here, we can see that the loss not decreasing actually triggered. So we had issues during the training run. And you can also see for the overtraining that there were no issues found. All right, you can further drill down and also check for the tensors to be saved. And by default for PyTorch, the loss tensors will be stored as you can see here. All right, so what we can also do in Studio is now going to the actual training job. So I'm going here in my menu to experiments and trials. And I'm looking for this specific training job, which is this one here. I can right click and then open debugger for insights. And you can also open it in trial details. So let's have a look at debugger insights. So here you can see the results nicely visualized. So for example, here, if I open the notes tab, you can see all of the instance specific findings. So again, I used a P3 to X large instance. And here you can see the charts, how the CPU utilization looked over time, how the network utilization looked, how my GPU looked. So you can see here, for example, that the GPU utilization was roughly around 60% for my training job and the GPU memory here was around 25%. You can also here see a nice heat map visualization of the system utilization over time. And what we can also do is checking on the overview tab and we get a nice summary of our training job. So for example, time spent in each phase of the training, like here is roughly 15% spent on initialization and around 84% in the actual training loop. You can find all the job details listed in here, much more information like training progress over time. You can find here a nice overview of the resource utilization, for example, the network, GPU, CPU, the memory and IO. And also here, for example, which operations were the most resource intensive on the GPU. And also in case there's any issues found, more information around the framework. And if we look here on the right side in the insights, we can actually see that the profiling also identified two more issues in my case. So one is around the batch size. And the suggestion here is run on a smaller instance type or I should increase the batch size. And that's a good insight. I can also find here a second node around low GPU utilization. So here they mention check for bottlenecks, minimize blocking calls, change the distributed training strategy or increase the batch size. So again, it's giving me a lot of good information where I can optimize my model training. Then what we can also do is describe the trial component. And here you can see if I click on debugger, the results from the CloudWatch events, which were specifically for my built-in rules. And here you can see again that the issues found in loss not decreasing. So we had actually the condition being met. But again, the overtraining seemed to not have happened in this case. So I would definitely have a look at the loss not decreasing and see what happened there. What we can also do from the summary from the debugger insights is download a report. And this will give you access to this HTML profiler report that is being generated. 
and also summarizes all of the findings really nice here in one single HTML file. Here are a couple of links for you to get started. Happy building!